Hello and welcome to this lecture, where we'll take a look at working with transactions in Zen Framework 2. Because we currently don't have a use case for doing so, I'm just going to give you an example of how one can use transactions. So for our example, we'll pretend that we're adding tags to our posts in a different table. But before we get into the details of how to use transactions, let me first explain the motivation for even using transactions. Transactions help us satisfy the asset principle from computer science, where each letter represents a property, which I will briefly explain now. So the A in asset stands for atomicity, which essentially means all or nothing. So when performing a transaction, everything should succeed or nothing should be applied, so the state should always be valid after a given transaction has completed. So let's say we're inserting into a database five times and an error occurs on the third insert, then the transaction has to be rolled back and nothing has to be changed in the database. Either that or everything has to succeed. The C in asset stands for consistency. This means that any transaction that is applied to the database will bring the database from one valid state to another. And the I in assets stands for isolation. The isolation property ensures that the concurrent execution of transactions results in a system state that would be obtained if transactions were executed serially i.e. one after the other. The D stands for durability and this property ensures that once a transaction has committed it will remain committed even in the event of power loss for example or the operating system crashes or something like that. So now let me show you an example of using transactions. So let's go into our post repository impl class and let's scroll up to the save method here. Now I'll wrap all of this functionality within a try catch block. And this is so that I can catch any exception that might occur and perform a database rollback here, which I'll add in a moment. So let me just add this code inside the try block here. So I'll say insert block post here. And the first thing I'll do is that I'll begin the transaction here. So I'll call this adapter to access our database adapter. I'll call get driver to get the connection here. And this exposes a method named begin transaction, which I'll invoke here. So now we have started a transaction and down here as the last thing in the try block, we have to commit this transaction. So I'll access the connection here and I'll say commit. And this line is only reached if no exception is thrown above. So we'll be sure that if this line is executed, then everything went well and we are ready to commit the transaction. Otherwise, we can roll back the transaction here. So I'll say this adapter, get driver, get connection and roll back. And I'll just throw the exception. So in this case, we're going to roll back the transaction. So nothing is applied to the database. So it's in a valid state because we're leaving, leaving it intact. So let's say that here we will insert tags. And I'm just going to pretend that I'm inserting into a tag table that in fact doesn't exist, but I'll write the code either way because actually I need it to show you what happens if an error occurs within a transaction. So let's get the inserted ID or the auto generated ID from this insertion into the post table. And I do this by accessing the adapter get driver, 
get connection and there's a method called get last generated value we don't need to add a name if we're using mysql if we were using postgres then we would need to insert the name of the sequence but this is all we need so i'll add a new sql object i'll add a new one because the state of this object has been manipulated i'll say new send db sql sql and i'll pass in the database adapter i'll create a tags insert variable equals tags sql insert and i'm just using these variable names just to ensure that we don't have any conflict with what we did above so values pass in an array let's say we have a name of the tag and we'll say send framework to here and let's say that this tag table has a foreign key to the post table and that is why i retrieved the last generated value from the connection here and let's say into the tag table and let's just create a statement tag statement equals tags sql prepare a statement for sql object with our tags insert variable passed to it and we'll say tags statement execute to execute the statement exactly like before so now let's go to our browser and navigate to the add blog post page and i'll just enter some test data here test title test title slug this is some test content and let's see what happens as expected we get an error because we didn't create any table in our database named tag but what's interesting here is that if we inspect our database and we go into the post table let's order by the key you'll see here that no post row has been generated or inserted and this is important because this means that the insertion down here throws an exception which is caught here so the changes that were applied to the database in the transaction are rolled back so in effect this insertion here is rolled back because an error occurs here and this means that our code complies with the asset principle particularly the atomicity property that says all or nothing should be applied to the database and in this case an error occurs so nothing is applied to the database so that's all for this lecture now you know how to work with transactions in Zen Framework 2. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture.